Drawing concern this week, we ask you to please keep Ruth Grant, Susan Segal, Roger White, and Olive Poff in your prayers. And this week, we pray for Bell's Corners Pastoral Charge, Nepean, and St. George's Anglican Church, and for CDSG, 4th Canadian Division Support Group in Petawawa. In our Health Matters Workshop, the Health Council is pleased that our Leanne Tom will lead a workshop at Wesley on 1 p.m. Sunday, April the 7th, about the pharmacist's role in keeping you, helping you maintain your health. Leanne's presentation will include time for question and answer. And wow, all the ladies are invited to join in small groups to explore the shops in downtown Pembroke on April the 11th. We will meet in the church parking lot, first at 1015 and then explore Main Street. And at 1115, we will meet for lunch at the Bonanza. And please RSVP to Lynn and the numbers in your bulletin. The Upper Ottawa Valley UCW Annual General Meeting is on Monday, April 15th at Grace United Church Cobden. And, the, and all women are invited to this event, which includes refreshments, lunch, and the annual report and a special guest speaker. And uh, Amy Bailey, who represents the Circle of the Turtle Lodge, will tell us about the First Nations culture and tradition. And there are more information in your bulletin. The Spring Fling Dance and Dessert is on Friday, April 19th at 7.30, $15 per person. There are door prizes and a silent auction. And if you wish to donate funds or dessert, please contact Ruth Locke. The UCW New to You sale will be on Friday, April the 26th from 12 to 6 p.m. and April the 27th from 9 till 12. And thank you to all who cont contributed in memory or celebration of loved ones for our Easter flower display of the cross and altar. And thank you to the people who helped with the distribution to our shut-ins and loved ones. We were able to bring Easter blessings to 35 people from our flock, and it was very much appreciated. Thank you. Good morning. Today it's a funny Sunday. We have a humor. And before we begin that, um, just want to tell you that um, if you need a uh, assistant, somebody to sit next to you as you will be laughing all the way from the beginning to the end of this service, just raise your hands and I'll be coming faster. We begin by acknowledging that the land in which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Nation. Shall we keep our hearts and our minds together as we begin our service? Dear Lord Jesus, light of the world, as we light this candle, we acknowledge your love and kindness. We acknowledge your coming and your sacrifice. And we celebrate your resurrection and the gifts of life, word and spirit. We pray that your light enlightens our mind and spirit. We pray that your light overwhelm and cleanse the darkness of sin in this world. Thank you for the privilege of shining your light and for your promise that when we are in the darkness, you are there with us. And so we begin by, uh, not by singing, not by singing. We are going to begin by 
putting our hearts and our spirits together again by breathing in, breathing out. If you have any fear or anything that is not nice, um, if you woke up this morning and you find that you're not feeling good, let me tell you that you're in the house of the Lord. There's no reason to feel like that. And um, some people they wonder what I'm going to say, right? That's what you're wondering. What is he thinking? What, why he is not talking? Well, I'm talking, the reason, the problem is you're not hearing because uh, I'm talking quietly in my heart and you're supposed to hear. Well, that's not the case. So I was going to begin by saying the following. There was uh, this gentleman who was a very good man and uh, he, he had a dog and uh, his dog died. And so he went through the process, do the burial, you know, he did everything. And then the other day he went to the coffee shop and he was talking to his friend who happened to be of the other denomination. So he was from one other denomination and he, this person was from the other denomination. And he, they share about um, the, bar, the, the dead dog and how he felt, how he was feeling so bad. And the gentleman asked him, was the dog a Roman Catholic or was the dog a Lutheran or Anglican? What was the dog religion? And the gentleman said, none. Anyway, the humor of this, I'm going to tell you at the end. So you better listen all the way to the end because if you don't listen to the end, you will miss the humor, which will come at the end. You have something for us? Yes. So we have our opening hymn number 173. Only one verse, 173, only one verse, the first verse, only. attention to the call of worship. We gather with joy for Easter continues. Locked doors have been opened and fear has turned to peace. We celebrated the presence of the risen Christ among us. Doubts can be rest and answered. Let us rejoice and be glad. Please continue standing if you don't mind. We marvel at your constant love. 
your victory over death and your resurrecting hope which embraces us in every circumstances. Trusting in these gifts, we seek to live as Easter people in every time and place. Fill us with the gift of your Holy Spirit in this time of worship and grant us your peace through Christ, our risen Savior. Together we pray. Merciful God, we confess our trust in you, Ken Wild, and we can become anxious about many things. We talk about love, but we fear those who differ from us. We cling to our personal agendas and neglect your call to save others, especially when that service costs us something. Forgive us through the power of your Holy Spirit, rekindle our passion for you as we can witness to your love in all we do. Amen. Hear the words of the risen Christ. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Receive the peace and forgiveness of Christ and share the peace with one another this day and every day. Amen. So this morning, before you sit down, I want you to turn to someone or turn back to someone who is standing behind you. Share your hands, shake your hand and say, peace of Christ be with you. And the other person will say, and also with you. Thank you. You may be seated now. We have uh, two young people in our church today, and uh, I will ask them to sit where you are. How about that? You sit where you are, right? But I will, and the reason I'm asking you to sit where you are is because I need someone who is sitting next to you to help you out, okay? Right, there we go. Um, okay, I can see that nice smile. Have you ever been afraid? You have been afraid? How about your brother? Remy, have you ever been afraid? Yeah? You can remember when? Can you say that, Fonfa? Or going down the stairs when it's dark. Okay. Okay. And how many of us here we have been afraid? I myself have been afraid many times. Have you? Okay, perfect. Everybody here have been afraid. Is there anyone here right now, young one and the younger in spirit, who is not afraid of anything? If you are not afraid of anything, raise up your hand. It's only me and Eric. We are not afraid of anything. <laughs> There's a time when you, ha you, you have to be afraid. The world is going so fast, you, need, you will be afraid. Sometimes you are afraid. Okay, this is what happened. Do you know there's a traffic light on the road? And sometimes you have two traffic lights. You have, you have uh, not traffic lights. There's the lights on the road, street lights. And sometimes you have a set of lights on this side and set of lights on that side. So one day I was walking. And young men and young ladies, listen to me. You will love this. So one day I was walking. And I didn't know that there was light on this side. So while I was walking... I saw two shadows in front of me. And to my surprise, I turned around so fast, thinking there was another person coming behind me. I didn't know that was my shadow. Did you follow? So I was afraid. I turned around. Who is behind me? No, it was another light on that sh light that was shining on me, and there was a light on this side that was shining on me. And then in front of me, I saw two shadows. I'm like, a, who is behind me? There was nobody there. It was just myself. 
There will come a time in your life where you will be afraid. There will become a time in our lives when we will be afraid. And that is when Jesus today, he's coming to us and he's saying, peace be with you. Don't be afraid. I am here with you. It is not easy, but trust me, when you believe that Jesus he is there, you can keep walking. Why?
Let us pray together the prayers printed in the bulletin, please. Breathe your spirit upon us, O Lord, as we listen to the scriptures. Open our minds and hearts to receive your living word and fill us with renewed hope. Amen. First reading is from Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. A reading from Psalm 133. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Chapter 1 John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Before I read John chapter 20, which is the gospel for today, as uh, this Sunday, it's a Sunday for us to laugh and smile because Christ is giving us, he's coming to us, uh, removing fear and doubt. I have this to share. The Sunday school teacher asks his children to draw Christmas pictures. She goes over to one student and sees he is drawing a picture of four on a plane, on airplane. What is this? She asks. Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus on a flight to Egypt, he says. Well, who is the fourth person? That is Pontius, the pilot. The Holy Gospel according to John, the chapter 19, and I'll be reading the last verses. The Holy Gospel. On the evening that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hand and said, and the side, the disciples were overjoyed when they saw, over rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. 
And if you don't forgive them, they are not forgiven. I have been wondering a lot about the doubts and the fear that we have in our lives. And sometimes I think about myself. Is there any way I can survive this life without being afraid of anything? And I find that the answer is no. Is no. There will be, at some point, there will be a degree of, of being afraid. How about it today? Today, it's even worse. The young people, as you have seen and you heard, they have a good jobs. They have a good jobs. But their future is completely shattered. They cannot buy house. Some of them, they cannot even buy cars because they have a student loan. They have a line of credits. They have so much on their shoulders that to afford to buy anything, it's absolutely impossible. They are afraid. There's a fear. And also, there's a fear of feeding the children. You will find a single mother, single father, or even parents living together they cannot afford to feed their children. And every day when they wake up in the morning, there's that fear. What am I going to feed my kids? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to pay my rent? And the list goes on and on and on. That's not enough. I know, I know for sure you watch television, you read a newspaper every day online or a hard copy. There's no channel that you turn on in Canada, forget about outside Canada, in Canada, that you will not hear somebody have been killed, stabbing, killing, homicide. All those kind of stuff is happening every single day. In Toronto last night was the 95 homicide of the year. Just one city. So people, they are even afraid to go out for a walk. You may be sitting down or going out to the beach, enjoying a nice sunshine, you want to breathe the fresh air, and there's a bullet flying, and all of a sudden you're gone, you're dead. People are afraid even to go and enjoy a good weather. What is happening? Friends, let me tell you this. Again and again, in the midst of our doubts and fear, and in the midst of our sin and falling, our crucified and risen Lord and Savior comes to us and say, peace be with you. How am I going to receive the peace of Christ and I have no bread to feed my children? How am I going to receive the peace of Christ when I'm thinking about walking miles to fetch for clean water? Well, some of you, you may think, what is he talking about? If you go outside Canada, there's a lots of people who they have to walk miles to get the clean water. And after they get to the place where they get the clean water, they have to keep that bucket, 20 liters, maybe 30 liters, some they get more, on their heads and walk back home. And here Christ is saying, peace be with you. Again and again he comes to us and say, do not doubt but believe. And you offer us the gift of new life in Christ and the promise of the Holy Spirit. That's what he did. 
And again and again, our risen Lord remind us of our mission to go and share the peace and the joy and the hope of this new life with our world that struggles to find peace, joy, and hope. Maybe it's a grandmother. You are the grandmother. Maybe you are the great aunt. Maybe you are the grandfather. And the kids out there, they have no hope. The kids out there, they are afraid. Jesus is calling us to sit down with these people, to sit down with this new generation and give them a glimpse of hope and peace that is in front. How they are going to achieve it, I don't know. But instead of these young people, and listen to this, everyone who is involved in stealing cars in Ontario, they are under the age of 17. Do you know why? It's because when they turn 19, their criminal record is sealed and it cannot be shared. But instead of these young people, these people who are stealing cars, they need hope. They need to be told there is a life outside criminal behavior. They need to be told there is a peace outside stealing. Jesus is asking us who have received the Holy Spirit to share that Holy Spirit with us. Jesus is asking us who have received his peace to share that peace with the world. To give us peace, to give us new life, to forgive our sin and gently remind us not to doubt, but to believe. To believe. I say this again. I say we come here every Sunday because we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in his resurrection. But what do we do with what we believe? What we do with what we believe, we share the good news with people. We give them hope. We give them future. Sit down with them. Share with them the peace of Christ. Tell them that, you know, there is another way of life. When I see Remy and his uh, sister here, these young people, the other day they walk by themselves coming to church. And I say, oh, how, where's your aunt? Say, oh, she's home, she's not feeling well. And I say, you came here by yourself? Yes. You walked? Yes. I just smile. And I hug them. When I see... That lady there who, by the grace of God, next Saturday she's going to celebrate her 100 years. Praise the name of living God. But at the same time I wonder, where are the young ones? Where are the young ones? The youngest of the youngest who is sitting here is Eric. That's it. And she is the oldest, and the, but she's the gold of our home. She is the source of information. Where are the youngest? Where are others? They are out there. Sometime when I stay in Pembroke, I wake up early in the morning. And when I say I wake up early in the morning, I mean the same time, 3 o'clock. So I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm walking that way. And then summer, I walk on Algonquin Trail. And I come across people sleeping on the Algonquin Trail. Not only they are sleeping, they are sleeping, some are sleeping inside the shopping cart. Children of God, there's something missing. And what is missing is the peace of Christ. It's the time for us to sit down and say, where is hope? Because people are now afraid of everything. They are afraid of their finances. They are afraid of their future. They are afraid of their own shadow, just like me. We are afraid of our own shadow. There's no peace. Christ is coming to us this morning. 
and he's reminding us, peace be with you. Then he turned to Thomas. Now Thomas was not there a week ago when Jesus first appeared to, to, to the other disciples. So Thomas, he is there and Jesus said, do not believe because you saw me. Don't believe because I'm standing in front of me. And you know what Jesus says? Say, Blessed are those who believe even without seeing me. Who are they? Us. We never saw Jesus. But we believe in him. Friends, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, peace of Christ be with you. In that peace of Christ, let it mean peace of Christ. Let it mean peace of Christ. Share it. Spread it. Spread the peace of Christ. Not violence. Not discrimination of any kind. It's a peace of Christ that has no boundary. Peace of Christ. You know, I always wonder what was in the mind of Jesus when he showed up. You know, he appeared to them first time. And then he disappeared. And they keep on closing the doors. And then this is the second time he appeared to them. And I'm wondering, I'm like, if they were students, these are uh, a bunch of failures. But no, they were not. They, were, they had a genuine reason to be afraid. But when Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit, the moment Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit, they went out of that room, and here we are. 1.7 billion followers of Jesus Christ today. It's because those 11 guys, they decide not to be afraid. They decide to cast away their doubt. They decide to cast away their fear. And they say, off we go. We have the power. And today we are the new disciples of Jesus Christ. Christ fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. And let's go out and make the Pembroke community a peaceful place. Peaceful for people to walk early in the morning. People for to, peaceful place for people to walk in the evening. A peaceful place for people to walk with their pets without being afraid to be hit by a drunk driver, to be hit by somebody who is under influence, to be attacked. It's because that peace of Christ will penetrate into everybody's heart. A pastor cleared his throat as he approaches the pulpit. I'm sorry if my voice sound a bit weak today, he told the congregation. There has been some sickness going around the office, and you all know I hate to be left out of anything. My church held a weekday, including digging holes for a garden plot. My youth pastor put it, if you are free next Thursday and don't mind getting dirty, show up. The pastor gave a sermon on a family beginning with these words. I have been a parent for about five years now. I think I have pretty much figured it out. Just to make you happy and don't feel offended because today it's a Sunday we smile because Christ came to us and he gave us that peace. There was a gentleman, wife went to hospital. And he told the doctor, the, the doctor called the gentleman, the lady and said, I need to speak with you, madam. So she show up. What is this all about? He said, it's your husband. What's wrong with my husband? Well, he is, uh, when I saw him la last time, he's talking about the angels who are turning the lights on in the house all the time. And the woman was like, really? Oh, yes, he says every time he woke up overnight, he go to the bathroom, the angels of the Lord. The moment he opened the door, the angel of the Lord turned on the lights. 
And the lady was like, really? Yeah. And then she says, doctor, I'm afraid my husband has started that bad habit again of using the fridge instead of the bathroom. This one should not offend the ladies, please. The ladies do not be offended with this one. So uh, the pastor was inside the sanctuary preaching, and then all of a sudden, Satan show up. And everybody in the church ran out, ran faster, including the pastor. Everybody was finding a place to hide. But there was a young man who was sitting at the front pew he didn't move. So Satan approached the young man and says, you're not afraid of me? And the, day was, and the young man said, no, no, I'm not. Can you tell me why? Why would I be afraid of you and I've been living with your sister for 20 years? May our Lord Jesus Christ help us as we smile and we laugh, as we walk out of here without any fear and any doubt. Go to the community, bring, remove fear, remove doubt. Let everyone smile. Let everyone, everyone laugh just like you. Amen. But because it's a special Sunday, I'm going to invite one person. Wait, Sandra. I'm going to invite one person who is willing to come. One person. Use that mic. If you have a clean, I use this word, a clean humor that you want to share with us, that mic there, it's yours. Anyone who wants to do that, don't be afraid. Oh, there we go. You want, why don't you use this, I'll one? use this one? Use this one. Use this one. Yeah, you can stay here. I can stay yeah, here. You're part of it. I'm part of it. Let me drink some water. All right. So I'm at a general council meeting. And at a general council meeting, uh, we gen have a tendency of invite inviting other denominations. And so there was a, a Catholic priest and a United Church minister and an Anglican bishop were discussing various things about the church and talking about their sermons and their homilies. And so I, I joined the conversation and and the, the Catholic priest kept talking about the homily and the Anglican minister, or the Anglican bishop and, and the United Church minister kept talking about sermons. And so me being ignorant and, and just a lay person, so I, I, said, I said to the, to the Anglican uh, bishop, I said, so exactly what is the difference between a sermon and a homily? And the, the Catholic priest pipes up and says, oh, about six minutes. <laughs> Anyone else? I have one. Uh, Gary, come up. Jay, come on. <laughs> so this is a story about a gentleman who had been to the doctor. And the doctor called him and said, you know those tests we did for you? I have bad news and I have worse news, which would you rather have first? And the fellow says, well, give me the bad news. Well, the bad news is that the report said that you only have 48 hours to live. And the guy says, my goodness, what could be worse than that? The doctor says, well, I tried to call you yesterday. <laughs> I was thinking that he was going to say this one. So the gentleman went to the doctor and the doctor told him, I have bad news and good news. Oh, he says, give me the, the bad news first. 
The bad news is uh, you have been diagnosed with the early stage of Alzheimer. Oh, my gracious. Oh, this is so bad. What's the good news, doctor? The good news is you're going to forget what I told you in two minutes. <laughs> Sandra, are we ready? Yes. Are you ready? Jesus Christ is risen today, 155. let us pray together generous God thank you for the hope we can claim in your resurrecting power bless the gifts we bring so they may spread the hope in the world you love in the name of your greatest gift Jesus Christ we pray amen you may be seated please Thank you, loving God, for your re renewing presence in our lives and for the many ways you make yourself known to us. In the word spoken in peace, in actions that embody love, in creation that awaken wonder within us, and in worship that inspires faith and understanding. With the memories of the grave you have shown us and with the confidence in your will, yet show us more. We pray that all people will come to know the life-giving joy we find in Christ. We pray for those who are feeling fearful, worried, or overwhelmed in these days of economic pressure and uncertainty. Reveal to them your risen presence, and together, congregation, we pray. We pray for those who face violence and unrest each day in the countries around the world and in our own community. Lord Jesus, reveal to them your presence. We pray for our nation, province, and municipal leaders as they seek solution to the challenges in our common life. Give them wisdom and compassion, Lord Jesus, Reveal to them your risen presence. We pray for our congregation, for churches in our community, and for Christians around the world, especially those facing persecution and danger. Lord Jesus, reveal to them your risen presence. We pray for those who are ill, in pain, or in grief. We remember before you, silent or aloud, those on our hearts today. Bring them comfort and strength. Lord Jesus, 
Reveal to them your reason. God, our maker, hear our prayers and use us in a way we may not yet even imagine, responding to those around us with the love we see in Jesus Christ. With the hope hearts, we offer the prayers that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from the evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in faith with the peace of Christ within you to witness to his kindness in the world. And may God's resurrecting love open the future for you, empowered by the Spirit and embraced by the presence of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks, 179. <laughs>
Live, we'll be getting phone calls. <laughs> One shot goes live, we'll be getting